You're listening to episode 97 of Liz's Healthy Table. Looking for a healthy new way to feed your family without the hassle and hype? Welcome to Liz's Healthy Table, where your host, registered dietitian nutritionist Liz Weiss, serves up fresh and flavorful recipes with a tasty side of science, good nutrition, and fun. Are you and your family ready for some wholesome food that tastes great too? Don't change that dial. Your food adventure starts here. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. On this week's show, we are adding flexibility and joy to the foods that you you feed your family and you feed yourself. My guest today is DJ Blattner. She's a fellow registered dietitian and author of two books, The Flexitarian Diet with 100 Quick and Delicious Recipes and The Superfood Swap, a four-week plan to eat what you crave without the crap. Let's get real, right? DJ Blattner, Don Jackson Blattner, is a certified specialist in sports dietetics. I can't believe she's never been on my show, but you know, here we are. She is uh, on the advisory board of Shape Magazine. She is a celebrity diet consultant for People Magazine, and she is a trusted expert appearing regularly in local and national media outlets, including Good Morning America. And this is really cool. She starred in and won the primetime reality TV show on ABC called My Diet is Better Than Yours. Hooray for dietitians for winning that. She owns a nutrition consulting and communications business with a focus on real food, more fun, and no BS. She lives in Chicago and has a healthy obsession with jumping rope. We will be talking about that. You can find her online at djblattner.com and on Instagram at djblattner. A few friendly reminders before we get started. If you love the show, tell a friend about it. Post your review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, wherever you get your podcasts. Follow me on lizeshealthytable.com and be sure to check out the show notes from today's show for all the recipes and resources discussed. Follow me on Instagram too at Liz Weiss. I actually just got to 4,000 followers. What the heck has taken me so long? I've been on that platform for years. I should have 400,000 followers. What is wrong with me? I will ask Dawn. Anyway, now to explain why a flexitarian diet is a style of eating you may want to adopt and to share a bunch of recipes to curb your cravings, especially for sugar, and to bring super nutrition to your table is DJ Blattner. Ta-da. Welcome to the podcast. Who knew that uh, episode 97 was going to be the best yet? Uh, <laughs> girl, <laughs> thanks for having me. Well, it is so good to have you. You know, I was just thinking today that my platform, Liz's Healthy Table, I founded it in 2017. That's when this podcast went live. Before that, it was Cooking with the Moms. And yeah, I'm at show 97. Time is flying by. I'm giving you a round of claps. I mean, that is intense, right? That's uh, you're almost at your hundredth. Are you having a big hundred episode party? You know, I, I want to come. I need, yeah, you will. Maybe I should do a virtual party. I haven't ah. even thought about show 100. I need to do something. I should have uh, saved that for you. Should have saved oh, it for well, you. <laughs> well, I will come to the party. <laughs> we could have jumped rope. <laughs> if, oh girl, you know it. But yes, if you have a party, I will be there. Okay. It it will have to be virtual, obviously. So let's get the show kicked off. Just tell everybody a little bit about yourself, where you live. We'll get into what you do for work in a minute. But I do want to hear about jumping rope because that is your hobby. (laughs) Tell me about your hobby. Let's just get a little bit of the backstory on you, Don Jackson Blattner, DJ. Yes. Well, so you did a great job in my official bio introduction. But so the like more low key version of it, I live in Chicago. I am married almost 17 years to my hot, fabulous hubby, Chris. <laughs> I am a stepmother uh, and his name is Christian. Um, I, yes, I do love jumping rope. I feel like you did mention it's a hobby. It's a hobby, but it's becoming like almost, I'm a superstar at it. So it's now almost becoming like, I need to get paid for it because it is just like such a skill set that I have. <laughs> I do love my city. The winters are you know, tricky. They're tricky. (laughs) Let's just say that. But it is definitely, it is a big, big city. I live right actually in the city, like the heart of the city. I love being so urban, 
But I also love that, you know, you hear about Chicago, real friendly people. Like, I really think it's true. Like we smile at each other down the street. Well, at least I'm smiling and they're probably like, you're smiling behind your mask. (laughs) Well, yes, it's it's exactly right. You know what? Speaking of that, I actually burst into tears when I was in the airport. Um, You know, I was traveling with my mask and they ask you, you know, can I see your ID? And then they say, could you pull your mask down so that I could match your picture? I pulled my mask down and I smiled at the woman who was, you know, TSA. And I started bawling thinking, I miss smiling at people so much. Like, I can't believe how that felt to like smile at someone. And it's like this pandemic has definitely, you know, showed us like those gratitude for those little things of like smiling at strangers. I know I can relate because I was just traveling too. I had to go to New York and they have you pull the thing down. And it's just such a weird it's so surreal, right? Yes, it, it is still. I mean, even though we've been in it for some time. I know. It's like, please, I mean, hey, please we, be over. Yeah, but we've all gotten so acclimated with this virtual uh, business that I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm loving it because now you get to come in to my actual home office. Mm-hmm. That's right. And, you know, early on in the pandemic, you did a pantry party on your Instagram every week. I was on it and it was so cool. It was so much fun. And it was really like you were the first person to really lean in big time to Instagram and to going live each week and having great guests and engaging with people. And it was so much fun. It gave us something to look forward to. Yeah, I'm going to watch DJs. Did you do it every week or every day? I think you did it every day. Yeah, I did it every day. And it was, I mean, part selfish. Honestly, it was, I needed a reason to wake up every day. Like I was missing socializing. I was feeling, you know, very like homebound, like we were. And uh, it was, it really came out of an idea of like, Hey, I'd like to do something every day with people that I, you know, find interesting. And so yeah, pantry party came to be. So fun. So fun. Quick question on jumping rope. Cause of course I did it when I was eight years old. So, and I've seen you on Instagram jumping rope and it's not like, you know, two girls, you know, each at the other end and someone's in the middle jumping rope. You've got like this jump rope and you're flipping things around and you're jumping and I'm really in awe. Like, how do you, how do you do that? (laughs) And it's good exercise, right? Thank you for that. Well, that was a pandemic treasure because I am a big gym rat. Like I enjoy the gym. I enjoy talking to people at the gym. Like I love going there. It's just so fun to me. Well, when the gyms closed, I didn't know what to do. And I live really in a very urban area in Chicago. So I was actually nervous to go outside and run because, you know, at the beginning it was like, oh my gosh, don't look at people. I don't (laughs) leave your house. So I was like, what am I going to do for exercise? So I actually just took right before the pandemic, I took a jump rope class and hated it. Like, I know the word hate is strong and I'm using it on purpose. Like I really hated it. It was frustrating. It was hard. It was tiring. And so I threw away my jump rope, in fact, but then the pandemic, I was like desperate. So I fished it out of the garbage and I started jumping rope a little every day. And I started noticing I got better and getting a little bit better, you know, like those small changes we talk about in nutrition, like same thing with fitness. I started noticing every day I got a little better. And then I just, I was like, I'm in it. I'm, this is, there's no going back. So for a little over a year, I've been very much, you know, trying to learn tricks and trying to build my stamina and strength. And it's really, it's, it's a fun pastime because I, I have a girlfriend that is an actual jump rope teacher and she teaches me tricks and, you know, we have some rosé too. Let's just, you know, I, let's just point out, I throw rosé at it. <laughs> throw some rosé at the jump rope. And yeah. uh, so do you think there, is there like competitions for jump roping? I mean, is this a real thing? It is a real thing, actually. I, and I shouldn't probably joke that I'm a superstar jump rope because when you really learn the jump rope community, like, whoa, there are mega stars there and so many tricks, so much speed. So anyway, I mean, it's a real thing. It's out there. Maybe you can be the the, the champ in your age group. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is true. I will say what I, we have like jump parties with different various jump rope people in the community. And, you know, I'm very much the newbie and struggle with many of the skills compared to many people. But I always say I might not have the skills, but I'm going to bring the best attitude to this jump rope party. <laughs> so anyway, I make up what I don't have in skill. I make up with attitude. You bring the color, the glitter, you bring the fun. All good. All good. So tell everybody what you do, djblattner.com, but tell everybody 
what you do. And by the way, four years ago, when I was starting Liz's Healthy Table and I was like, I needed a new website, your website is so gorgeous. And I would always go to it. My husband helped me with my website. I'm like, look at this website. I love it. And the colors are so vibrant, but, but obviously more importantly, you've got great content there. So tell everybody a little bit about what you do. Oh, it's great. You know what? Also, I was remiss when you asked me to tell you about myself that I have this name thing going on that I feel like you've really leaned into and I, I appreciate it. So what my name is Dawn Jackson Blattner. Okay. And it was too long to put all of that on Instagram as my handle. So my like alter ego that I always wanted to be called is DJ Blattner. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'll put DJ Blattner as my handle on Instagram and I'll start using it for my website. I'll start using it places. And then people just started calling me DJ. People I didn't know were like, oh, you're DJ from Instagram. And I'm like, oh my gosh, my real name is changing into, <laughs> into DJ. So anyway, that's actually a personal crisis we could talk about at some point offline that I have like these two identities <laughs> that are like, is she Dawn Jackson Blattner? Is she DJ Blattner? It's like, it's sort of like Beyonce and Sasha Fierce. It's like when I'm on stage and I like want to be like, Sasha Fierce. I'm like DJ Blattner. Anyway, I digress. It's like Prince. Prince, you know, he went from having a name to being a symbol. <laughs> so Boom. Like, hey, yeah. great idea. Great mm -hmm. idea. Maybe I erase all the names and come up with a symbol. Let's I love, I love where you're headed. <laughs> but so, yeah, uh, thank you for the website love, because I do spend a lot of uh, time, energy, and good vibes into that baby. And so, I mean, I do something called nutrition. Wow. And wow stands for words of wisdom. And so every single week on Monday for about a decade, I have created a nutrition. Wow. Email that I send to everybody who follows me there. Um, and then I take that and I post it on my website. So my website has like a decade's worth of weekly content from this nutrition. Wow. And it could be everything from like last week was how to use more uh, turmeric in your diet by stirring it into mayonnaise, mustard, and ketchup. <laughs> uh, it could be help with a sweet tooth at night, or it could be, you know, a recipe that was really, really quick that I loved. So I, I pour a lot into that every single week. And then I do a lot of brand work. So like a brand will contact me and say, Hey, would you like to talk about oatmeal or eggs or our grocery store? And why I love that uh, is because it is such a creative outlet. Like I love trying to like stir up ideas and pitch them to people, you know, like, how about we do this and this and this and this and this and this and this. So I love working with brands to sort of stretch my creativity muscle. I do that a lot. And I actually still see clients. I um, see clients virtually. I gave it up for a short period of time when I was uh, doing like the reality TV show and doing writing books. And I sort of put that to the side, but I actually love seeing clients. I don't see many and I see them virtually because they are a source of real, you know, they're a source of real in my life of like the real struggle that happens with real people in the real world and that I love solving problems. So my technical business name to the IRS is Dawn Nutrition Strategies. I don't use it really anywhere but filing taxes, but um, I, re I believe in strategy. What is the difference between knowing all the things we know we should do um, and actually doing them? And I think it's just a good bucket of strategies, of strategies that are fun, that are motivating, that are feel good, that are high vibe. And so I secretly consider myself a strategist. <laughs> it's like the how to's, right? We, like you said, we could tell people eat a healthy diet, get your kids to eat vegetables, but you need the how to's, the practical. Yes, practical. And I really do think a missing piece uh, and something that I have cultivated in my own personal life that has been a big treasure is joy being a nutrient fun being an actual secret of success, not just like a, a great thing to have, but like actually a success tool. And, and why I think that is so true is that when you're in that energy of fun and joy, you know, you're more daring and brave to try things. Um, you're doing it with more of a light heart and you have a lot of energy behind it and it's motivating. You don't have to push yourself to should do anything to lead a shitty life, you know, you're doing it because you want to, you know? And so that's, I, I really, I, I think a lot of what I do with clients is that is adding, you know, to their, you know, diet rules and like lifestyle that they think they have to do is like, you know, lightening it up and keeping it a little bit more high vibe. 
You know, I will say, and I've been a dietitian for a long time and I've been interviewing people, you know, for my podcast for a long time. And I saw on your Instagram that you had written something and joy is a nutrient. And I thought to myself, I have literally never heard anything so perfect because diet and nutrition, especially with all these, you know, keto and and gluten-free. I was at the supermarket the other day and every magazine was anti-inflammatory or keto or gluten-free. And, and there's so much coming at people. And then they get wrapped up in the science. I always say, I'm not a mathematician. Like I don't eat with a mathematician's brain. I eat with that flavor and joyful brain. And so when you said joy is a nutrient, I'm like, bingo, that is it. If we can get into that mindset, it's going to make eating healthy, following those strategies, I think so much easier, so much more fun. Yeah, it is very true. And, you know, I play around a lot with my own personal nutrition. And then I, you know, read science and have a science background and and talk to people. One of probably the most aha moments that most of my clients have is I really talk about balancing a plate, not like how people balance it, balancing a plate with your wild child and your health nuts in mind every time you eat, right? So not just like being like, I'm a pleasure seeker. And not just being like, I am a biohacker. What are the nutrients in this? I'm a robot. You know, like, it's like, hey, I want to do good things for myself. When I put food into my human body, it is magic and it is changing every cell of me. I want to respect the health nut. I want to respect my cell health. But, and I'm a wild child. Like, I love pleasure. I love fun. So how can I do both? Because if you're ever at either end of the spectrum, you're not going to feel good. I will never be a biohacker. I can promise you that. (laughs) It's just like, I will need a PhD. I don't want to live my life like that. I want to enjoy. And I think my, you know, my listeners, definitely, they're always looking for recipes. They're always looking for those strategies to get their kid, their teen, to eat their veggies and to get those healthy meals on the table. You've written a book called The Flexitarian Diet. Can you tell everybody exactly, define it? Because you kind of like were the first out there with it. But what is the flexitarian diet? I think I eat that way. I think my husband, I think my whole family eats that way. I sense you do too. But what what is a flexitarian diet? And then give us an example of like a favorite recipe out of that book. Okay. So flexitarian diet is my first baby. I love that baby. It came out of two words, flexible plus vegetarian. So flexitarian. And really what ended up happening was I was always telling people I was a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian, I'm a vegetarian. And then I would go to a Cubs game and eat a hot dog and feel like horrible about myself. And like, I was breaking all these rules. I would do it like in secret and shame. And then I would go and my, you know, grandparents were making like, you know, turkey or sausages or whatever. And I would eat them because they were like the loving hands my grandparents, but I would do it. I felt so bad. I was like, I am the worst vegetarian in the world. And then I thought, man, wouldn't it be great if that people could be vegetarians, but have some flexibility and have these like, you know, foods in their diet without feeling bad about it. I was like, yeah, man, flexible vegetarian, flexitarian. And so I wrote that book because that's how I ate. I I was very plant-based ish you know, very vegetarian ish, but uh, I just, I love the idea of that flexibility. Um, And it ends up being, you know, a healthier way to eat because you're not cutting anything out. That's, you know, preach, hallelujah. Like, you know, flexibility is just such a beautiful thing. So if you're having something like fried rice, beef fried rice or shrimp fried rice, and you've got lots of brown rice in there and you've got lots of veggies and then you've got some lean ground beef or some shrimp or salmon, that's being a flexitarian because maybe you're eating vegetarian, you know, most of the week, but then you've got this recipe that everybody loves. Is that where we're at with it? Yes. It's like when you're having uh, meat, it's more of a condiment size, right? So it's like you said, there's, you know, it's not like a huge you know, focus of the meal. It's part of the meal. So yes, it's in condiment size and it's very swappable. And so it's like some days make that fried rice with beef, chicken, shrimp, sometimes make that with edamame or uh, chickpeas, you know? Um, So you're having that idea that not only is my meat in in condiment size (laughs) quantities, but it also can be swapped out for more plant proteins. And I love that piece because I think a lot of times when people try and go totally vegetarian, they forget to eat plant proteins. They forget to eat protein. They just take out meat 
and think all's well. And it's like, no, please, no, don't take it out. Swap it, baby. And that's kind of how I created my second book is that I was more obsessed with swaps. Okay. So give me an example of, you said a, a stepson. How old is he? Let's just say he's, he's an adult living with a condo he bought with his girlfriend. <laughs> okay. So he's like my son. So maybe he's 25, 26. Or 27. <laughs> or 27. No one's judging yes. you, Don. We do not okay, judge right. on my podcast. Okay. I love that. But yes, very good. Very good. Thank you. So, for that. so when you were writing that book, I'm assuming he was uh, younger at the time. And, you know, did you experiment on him a little bit? And what might be his favorite recipe from the flexitarian diet cookbook? Oh, you know what? Uh, kids say the darndest things. I mean, they are the ultimate truth teller. Like if you need to know if you have yellow teeth or if your hair looks bad, like ask a kid, <laughs> you know, they <laughs> will not hold back. It is like, whoa, too much truth. So in fact, you are so right on the money. I would absolutely experiment because I was like, if he will eat it, anyone will eat it. Um, and that's honestly where I came to the idea of, you know, this idea of cravings of, you know, if you like fried rice, if you like tacos, if you like pizza, you know, if you like hamburgers, those are the things to really focus on, right? Um, as opposed to being like, I'm having, you know, a bok choy stir fry that is vegetarian. It's like, okay, maybe, but like, wouldn't it be more fun to like have a grill out and do like, you know, some kale burgers or like have a taco fiesta and have it be, you know, like tacos that are black beans as opposed to beef or lentils as opposed to chicken. You know, so those are the types of things that would be very much my household crowd pleasers are those things that we already crave. And we're just swapping in more of those plant proteins like the tacos and the burgers. And, you know, and I think that's true of most people, no matter the age, you know, I think we, we tiptoe around kids so much of like, you know, kids, you know, is Billy going to eat it kind of thing. It's like, you know what? Hey, adults, we, we want craveable food too. It's like, yeah, maybe we can take some medicine once in a while with what we're eating. You know, it's like, okay, fine. But most of the time, you know, we want, like you said, the more of like the joy and the fun and the actual craveability of what we're eating. So do you have a favorite recipe in that book? Actually, I think it is the nutty brown rice. It's sort of like a fried rice version. Uh, it's like brown rice with a bunch of chopped up nuts in it. <laughs> and I think there is like green onion in there and it's, uh, it's optional, serve it with an egg. So it's sort of like a fried rice version, but just like way more nuts. That sounds so good. I am actually making a beef fried rice recipe after our podcast interview today. And because I'm doing a cooking demo and that's, I think the recipe for a bunch of dietitians, I think that's the recipe I'm making. So I'm playing with it. So that's why I've got fried rice, the brain right now. So I want to talk a little bit. Oh, oh, I know what I want to talk about. So a, I don't know if it was like a month or two ago, you were, you said you work with brands, you were working with Danone and you did a virtual cooking demo for a bunch of dietitians. And I hopped into it and I loved it because we got the recipes ahead of time and we cooked along with you. And one of the recipes that you made was a, for a chickpea flatbread with tahini sauce. And I had never done anything with chickpea flour. So I loved this. So I thought we could just talk a little bit because this is perfect. If you're eating a flexitarian diet, you can like make the chickpea flatbreads and you can literally top it with anything, but tell me, tell everybody a little bit about the chickpea flatbreads. How do you make them? And then what's this tahini sauce and what did you top it with? Well, so th that would be a great example of how I got to be creative, right? So it's like, hey, you want to do this demo and like, what ideas could you bring? And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Like I had been playing with beet lattes and I am obsessed with beets and the power of beets. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's a fun way you can juice them in your blender and like, oh, and so I did a beet latte, which was pink, hot pink, like, come on, like best recipe. Um, so I did that. I was very excited about, and then this chickpea flatbread is like, give me a break. All you have to do is add water to chickpea flour, which is sounds maybe hard to find, but I found it everywhere. I found it any of the grocery stores around me, um, but they also sell it online. So you have chickpea flour, you have water. I added a little olive oil because I liked the sort of texture of more than just plain water. Um, and then you make it basically like a pancake. So if you could pour some batter that is just chickpea flour, water, and a little olive oil into a pan and flip it like a pancake, now you have a flatbread. Well, I called it a flatbread because I was like making it pizza style. 
And my favorite pizzas always have like a fresh salad on top. So, and I learned that from like, a, I'm a Chicago girl and I, there are pizza shops everywhere. And my favorite pizzas are the one that they have like a fresh salad on. So anyway, I learned that from pizza shops around town. So I did this fresh salad on top of it, but it doesn't have to be just a flatbread, right? That thing could actually be like more crepe vibes. So you could have it like a dessert. It could be more like wrap vibes. So you can eat it more like a sandwich type of thing. And at, you know, like, or like a wrap at lunch, you can cut it up into like strips and have it like is like a salad topper. I really, I just fell in love with the ease of that recipe of flatbread. And of course the nutrition of the you know, chickpea flour. <laughs> well, tell everybody like exactly what is chickpea flour? Cause I sort of got ahead of myself a little bit and tell us about the nutrition. Yeah. So bottom line is one ingredient in chickpea flour, it's ground up chickpea peas. And I love just like chickpeas, fiber and protein claim to fame there. And so flour has the same, you know, it has the fiber and it has the protein. So I love it, but it's also, I mean, for people who follow a more gluten-free vibe of their life, or like a lot of my clients are gluten-free light, you know, it's not like we're banning all gluten-free food or gluten foods, but it happens to be many of the foods we eat are accidentally naturally gluten-free. Um, so this happens to fall under that, you know, lifestyle camp as well. And um, I never really knew what to do with it. I remember buying it and I was like, what is this? I don't know. It's cool. Um, and then I was like, oh, you could just make it very quickly and with water and oil, like a pancake batter. So easy, simple ingredients to use. I love it. I loved, so I made the flatbread, you know, along with you during the cooking demo. And I loved it because it was kind of soft. So you could turn it into a wrap or almost like a soft taco, or, or you could eat it like a pancake. I feel like you could add so many different things into it, but you put this salad on top and you had, I, I remember there was, I think it was red onion and there was some fennel, right? Some people had never really uh, even worked with fennel before, which it's interesting. I love fennel. It has a licorice flavor. And my son, Simon, who is 22. I'm not embarrassed to share that. <laughs> and he eats every vegetable. He's such a good eater. He does not like fennel. And if I ever make it, he's like not going there, which is so weird for someone, but I, I, I honor that it's okay. You can't love every vegetable. And, but anyway, so there, there was this like crunchy salad on top. And then you made this tahini sauce. Now tahini for people that's ground up sesame seeds. If you live in a place like Israel or in the Middle East, tahini is just like on every table. Tahini is such an integral part of the diet. So tell us about that tahini sauce. I actually use swirl tahini into brownie batters. I love tahini. So tell everybody about that tahini sauce you made with the yogurt. Yes. So you're right. It's sesame seed paste, which is like, what is this? But then I think like, Hey, that's peanut butter is the same kind of thing. It's just like peanut butter, but it's made out of sesame seeds instead. Right. So that makes it, I feel like more like approachable when I was even thinking about like, how do you use this when the first times I was using it? And so, like you said, it's sort of like anywhere you would use peanut butter, you could use tahini, like, you know, even like peanut butter and jelly sandwich could be tahini berry sandwiches or whatever. And so I love it because it thickens up sauces. So like, and I love yogurt sauce. So I just basically paired yogurt with tahini. And by the way, anytime you say the word tahini in anything, people are like, oh my God, I love that. Usually it's, it, most people like love tahini and it's sort of like a hot button right now. So I was like, I know dietitians because that's who my audience was. I knew if I put the word tahini in something, people would be like, oh, I love this. <laughs> so, um, so I just stirred basically tahini along with uh, yogurt and my, my usual stunt of putting lemon in things to make it bright and sunny, a little bit of salt and pepper. And that's really it. So good. I know I'm like staring at my fridge thinking I'm going to do something with that tahini later. What else would you do with that chickpea flour? So, you know, you made the flatbread. What else might you do with it so that it doesn't sit in someone's pantry forever? Okay. All I will say is that I really lean into those flatbreads. And like I said, don't be misunderstanding. When I say the word flatbread, that's a real bummer because it's not just a flatbread. So I make them and it can be a breakfast pancake. It could be a dessert. It could be a wrap. So I will make, you know, a, probably a third of a bag of the flour, maybe even half. And I'll make a bunch of them. They are great in the fridge for like three, four days, but you can also freeze them. So you can basically have on hand always like a pancake or, oh, hey, you know what I did with them uh, the other day? Small group gathering, right? Small group family pod gathering. 
I warmed it up and put it as instead of crackers, because I didn't have any crackers for my snack board. I warmed it up and put it on a snack board with like cheese and olives and nuts. Oh uh, my gosh. And that it was delicious because it is sort of, it's not a cracker, but it's like this soft, fun thing to have with like cheese and olives. So I would say, use your whole bag. I don't really do much other than just make all of these flatbreads, but turn it into tacos and wraps and, you know, cheese board accoutrement. <laughs> Accoutrement, I love that. You know what else, darling? You could do it. Yes. You could, if for breakfast, I'm thinking you could smear a little nut butter on top, put some sliced bananas or blueberries, and then the kids, like or you, could just sort of pick it up like like a like a wrap, and then just eat that like a little breakfast sandwich. That would be really good. You get that good protein to keep the kids full for longer when they're going off to school. Yay, they're back in school. Add some berries or banana. Get that fruit in. Get the fiber. I think we need to start a, a worldwide trend here. Yes, that, you know, and I think, you know, like I said, I think it's a doing them a disservice by calling them a flatbread because you kind of are like stuck in this hole of like what a flatbread would be. But it's like, yes, it's like, think about it more like where would you use a wrap or a pancake or a slice of bread or a cracker? Like this could be involved in all of those things. So I love that breakfast idea, sort of like a on the go pancake chickpea pancake vibe stuffed. I'm going to do pancake that. Pancake taco. Like, is that, would that be a pancake taco? It, it could be a soft pancake taco. Yes. Or it could be know. a pancake wrap. I, yeah. I, I think there's a something roll up. there. <laughs> Make it I think, a roll oh up. yeah. A roll up. <laughs> That's right. We could be making like a breakfast sushi with it. I mean, there's no a roulade. Topic. It's a roulade. Oh, love this. I, I love to... the word roulade. <laughs> I do too. And a coutrement. Such a dietitian. A, a That's a good one. I like that one a lot. Okay. So we talked about tahini. We talked about chickpea flour. You know, I was looking on your website the other day and I hope everybody hops on over. And by the way, your, your Instagram, you do like the coolest, cutest graphics ever. Do you do that in Canva? Can I just ask you a little trade yes. secret? Oh my gosh, Thank they're you so, so good. Thank you so much for saying that. Yes, I do it in Canva and I am, you know, it's design, right? So I'm always like, you know, wanting to use my creativity in certain ways. And so Canva is like my favorite thing ever. I love it. It's cool. It. And then, you know, then there's Instagram reels, which you're doing some really cool with the green screen behind you. But can I just tell you, so I have an intern, she's at BU. She was on my Q and a show a while back if people haven't listened to that show. And yesterday I said, Jordan and I, we were testing a recipe together. I made the best hummus bowl with a shakshuka filling on top. Oh, it's coming on the blog this Friday. I'm going to send Yum. you a link. It's insane. But anyway, yeah. we're, we're virtually, you know, working together. We're zooming, we're recipe testing. And then I said, you've got, and I shot the video, like I'm going to do a reel, an Instagram reel. And I said to Jordan, I said, you know, here you are working with me. I'm like, you know, the adult, the mentor, the dietitian. And in about half an hour, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown. I am going to be so angry and so upset and like really cranky because I can't figure out Instagram reels. Like why I have a master's degree. Why am I doing this? And like literally a half an hour later, I was like, I want to just like curl up in a ball, all this new technology, right? It's just it's, a, it's creative, but it, there's that learning curve. It's like jump rope. It takes oh, a while. It, yes, it is true. And, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, know that your first ones are going to smell, stink <laughs> and be lousy. Right. <laughs> and so like, I know, like I am in still the very learning phases of this. So it's like, I posted, and I'm like, yeah, I know this smells stink and lousy, but I'm in the rink. I'm in the arena. I am working this, you know, and maybe one day it'll click. And maybe one day these things will not just be <laughs> such, such an accident to look at. I don't know. And I always say, is this going to be like the one thing I do that's going to go viral? Like, throw oh, me a yes. bone, throw me a bone. Come on. I've been doing this for so long, please. Something's got to go viral. You know, I'm not, I don't know what to say. Maybe, maybe the chickpea uh, flatbreads that'll go viral at some point. All right. So I'm on your website the other day and I see a barbecue chicken bowl and it is a flexitarian recipe, but I wanted you to just tell everybody a little bit about this barbecue chicken bowl, because I just thought it looked so yummy and how, as a person who follows a flexitarian diet, you would sort of change that and adapt it as you go through. Right. You're like, you're not going to be a vegetarian today because you're eating chicken, but maybe tomorrow you're going back to it. Yes. And I think this goes back to sort of our fried rice thing. So 
you know, if you're eating chicken, it's not the main thing on the plate, right? It's part of a lot of vegetables in there. And it's like, you know, good, but it's not the main thing. Um, and so deciding that one day it could be chicken and the other day I love, I love, well, I love barbecue sauce. First of all, let's just point that out, but I love all condiments, condiments and me were like pals. So putting condiments on beans in a skillet is I'm going to be doing a reel on that. I have a, like a list of reels that I want to do. And that is one of them is like, you know, a lot of times people open a can of beans and they'll like put them in this barbecue chicken bowl as the swap for the chicken. Okay. And it's like, wah, 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 you know, sad trombone or whatever, <laughs> because I mean, come on, man, they're good, but they could be great. If you just put your canned beans in a skillet with like a little barbecue sauce or a little taco seasoning or a little pesto or a little, like just like lemon and herbs or whatever. And then they get hot and then you put them in and then it's like, oh my gosh, you could easily swap that chicken to barbecue chickpeas and be equally as happy in this flex world um, if you do them right, right? Like not just taking up the chicken and putting in chickpeas that are plain, you know, you'll get a, a C, B plus on that, you know, but you really get an A when you do it. Like you put some love and care and flavor flav into those beans. I think you like chickpeas. I think we can agree. Oh, yeah. So here's the thing I do. I have, you know, you're never supposed to play favorites in the plant protein kingdom, but I do love me some chickpeas. Um, white beans I love. And actually I sort of in my world have beans that are paired with a theme. Let's just say I'm a big theme eater, like, you know, Asian, Mexican, Italian, Mediterranean, American, you know, whatever. So for me, like when I'm making something Italian, I want to swap out chicken. I'm not going to use a chickpea, please. Please, for me, in my mind, it goes white bean, white Gotta bean be themes. Cannellini. Of course. Yeah, of white course. bean themes to Italian. So when I'm teaching people how to flex and how to start swapping out meat for beans, I teach them how to think about beans and themes. So chickpea, a lot of times for me, works like with more of these American style, like the chicken, barbecue chicken. Like I like chickpeas there. Um, but if we're talking, you know, more tacos, that's where I'm probably thinking more pintos and black beans. Or if I am thinking about even like meatballs, like I really like kidney beans. I make these things called bean balls. <laughs> bean balls are like your meatball swap and they're delicious, but I actually really like kidney beans there because they have sort of an interesting color for my bean balls, but I'll use all types of beans. I don't play favorites. I usually just put them into the theme that they most go with in my own mind's eye. <laughs> well, I, I like the themes because for families who are meal planning, I think themes are a great guide. You know, Taco Tuesday, whatever Wednesday, Pizza Friday can really take a lot of the stress out of meal planning. I've never been a kidney bean fan, but I'm intrigued by the bean balls. I will look for that on your, web, <laughs> your, your website. I tend to, I would say like, is my bean, my go-to bean is probably black beans. I find myself cooking with them all the time. And when I think Middle Eastern, I think chickpeas. And I'm so I'd say like, I love Middle Eastern cuisine, Mediterranean cuisine. Yeah. Beans are good, but I like your tip about adding flavor before you just chuck them into something, give them a little zhuzh and up there. Right. Zhuzh. I, you know what? And I learned that and I trip um, to Greece. Uh, I was like, what? It was like eating a pile. It was like a white bean pile. And I, it was literally, I was crying. I was like, these are so good. Like what has happened to these beans? And they're like, well, you know, first we've, you know, made them from scratch with our love and like whatever in our kitchen. And then we just like quick sauteed them in a pan with some like oregano and lemon and olive oil. And you're like, oh, there, there's the ticket. Mm -hmm. So then I sort of took that trick back with me. And then, you know, I was like, and, you know, made it my American version of like, also, you could use barbecue sauce. <laughs> Chuck in the barbecue sauce. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, Greece, Greece. You know, I was supposed to go to Greece in, uh, for my big birthday, but um, obviously that did not happen because I haven't uh, been traveling due to the pandemic. So one day, one day I'll get yep. to Greece Rain and check. I'm going to get a big pile of beans. The first restaurant I go to, I would like a big pile of white beans, please. Yes. With oregano, oh, mm -hmm. a little lemon zest. Oh, I love that idea. Yum. 
Okay. So let's talk about sugar cravings. And you talk a lot about that breaking up with sugar. You talk a lot about that on your Instagram. I will admit since the pandemic, Tim and I, every night, we got to have our goodie. We're bad. And, but I shouldn't say bad. We really well all the time and every day. And then at night it's like, all right, I got to have a little, a little something last night. He said, it's too late. I'm not having any ice cream. I'm not having a goodie. So then we're watching TV. And then of course, 10 minutes later, can you get me some of those chocolate drops? That's what he calls chocolate chips. Can you get me some of those? He's British. Can you get me some of those chocolate drops? So I bring him this tiny little bowl and the bag, like you, you figure out the portion. But how do you break up with with your sugar cravings? Because I personally do love sugar. I crave yeah, it. Yeah, and uh, and I think I you know there's part of it that is clickbait in saying that, right? Like click on me, read me, so that I can secretly tell you you can have sugar. It's not that big of a deal. I am very much interested in how people eat. So when I talk about breaking up with sugar, it really is never the way that other people will talk about, like, it's so bad, you can never have it, like, oh my God. I'm saying how, how, how we do it is sometimes the sad piece. It's sometimes the piece that breeds the shame and guilt. So for example, I learned many, 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 many years ago uh, that I was buying cupcakes at this local cupcake place and I bought two of them and I brought them into the car and I ate the cupcakes in the car, they were supposed to be for dessert for me and my husband. And I said, Oh my God, like, I feel so horrible. Like that was just the worst thing ever. And that happened. The next day I was at a baby shower where the exact same bakery and the exact same cupcakes that I had just purchased the day before and eaten in the car uh, were at this party. And I had the same cupcake again at this baby shower with my friends in an element of joy, tasting it, loving it, feeling fun. And I thought, oh my God, that's such a different situation. Isn't that interesting? It's not about the food. It's not about the sugar. It's about how we are eating it. It is about the situation and the energy in which we eat things that actually makes such an impact. So when I'm talking about sugar, I'm saying, own it like a boss. You put that on a plate. You put those chocolate drops on a plate. And don't multitask and, you know, shove them mindlessly and enjoy them with your wife, have fun, drink some mint tea with it, play some music, have it be, it doesn't have to be social in that other people are there, but like social suites only, meaning social and fun and good vibe and ownership and be a boss, enjoy them, make a decision to eat it, enjoy it and move on, right? As opposed to feeling shame and guilt and sneaky, there is a huge difference. So that is more of what I teach than anything because that changes everything. I love that. I abs- I love this. You have so many great tips and it's so real. And I think also we talked before about all this restriction, you know, the biohacking and all that. You're saying, yeah, have if you love that cupcake, eat it. And of course, it's always helpful to have it in the context of a day where you ate really well and that might be your dessert. Can I tell you I made the best thing the other day? I'm totally into lemons right now. And I found this recipe for this gluten-free lemon cake because I really love cooking with almond flour and gluten-free flour. And I took the almond cake and I kind of adapted it and changed it and made sort of like a muffins or a cupcake size and added tons of lemon zest. And then I added, oh, instead of butter, I added olive oil and I added some blueberries. And then at, and then at the very end, I did a little bit of powdered sugar and lemon juice and kind of just brush it on top, you know, with a pastry brush. It was so lemony and yummy. And I'm looking at them right now, but that's the kind of thing. Like I made it, it was delicious. It's lemony, it's joyful. And then tonight when Tim and I sit down and have our goodie, that's what I'm having. I'm looking at it. I don't even want it now. I don't want it now. I'm looking at it. I'm going to hold it up and show you. It's covered in saran. Quick question. How well do you think those would ship? Because oh. I have a mailing address. That I can give you. <laughs> My mailing address. I am obsessed with lemons. My parents have a place in Arizona and they have in their backyard, in all of its beautiful glory, a lemon tree. Mm-hmm. And so I cannot even tell you that, you know, I'm always like begging them. I'm like, please put some lemons in the mail. There's nothing like my, my mommy and daddy's lemon tree. <laughs> you are so I lucky. Lemons. I was in Arizona in Tucson back in, I think, February, I don't know, March. I can't remember. It's a blur. And I did notice people had citrus trees 
in Arizona. Oh gosh, wouldn't that be so great? I live in the Boston area. You're Chicago. We, we're struggling here. It's cold. Here you go. I need a lemon tree. Yes, <laughs> lemon we do. Tree. We do. Actually, you know what? I always have like, I try and have lemon or yeah, lemon flavored, <laughs> yellow colored like flowers and stuff around. I love the color yellow. I went through a yellow phase. It's funny because I was doing a project for the American Egg Board, a satellite media tour in my kitchen here. And I, they wanted everything yellow, you know, cause eggs and yellow. And I sort of shopped my kitchen and I started, finding, you know, like a yellow bowl and yellow this and yellow that. And I thought, oh, I'm going to keep the yellow up. I have a lot of blue in here too. I'm going to keep the yellow up because I do find, and I went through this phase of yellow tulips in the spring, which, you know, it was probably snowing, but I bought them at the stop and shop. I love lem- I lemon and I love yellow. I'm totally with you. It's so happy. It is. It is. It does feel bright and, and sunny. I mean, yes. what can you say? So what is, let me ask you one more question about picky eaters and then we're going to wrap it up because I've got to let you go. You probably have a jump rope event to get to. So, um, <laughs> you know me. I you do. Know me. I know. She's like, can we be done so I can go jump rope? <laughs> so picky eaters, you know, is, is there one like overarching tip? You know, a lot of parents listen to the show and some people have picky spouses too, but if you have a picky eater at home, like, do you have a great Dawn tip, a wow tip to give us? So here's the thing with very different households. So like as a step parent, there's an added layer of interest in a story like this, because, you know, it's not just always your household. There's two households you're juggling. And one of the things that I had really, I mean, this was just like such a great thing is that we would do a calendar and it would be, everybody got a day. And so it'd be my day. I got to pick what we were eating. His day would be pick what he was eating, a husband's day. So that we all are saying, you know what? Hey, that might not be my favorite thing. I might be picky about that, but that's what we're all eating. I'm not going to short order cook here and I'm not going to not eat what I want because hello, but my day, we're all going to graciously take as many bites as we can of each other's stuff. And when it's your day and you pick chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese, I'm going to make them the best way that I can right? And balance it and have the vegetable out and all that stuff. And then really the division of labor of like, once I make it, my job is done. And that your job is to eat it or not eat it. And there's no drama. So the calendar of everybody gets a day and that we respectfully enjoy each other's food each day, a game changer. And then the second thing was having a snack list on my fridge. So hearing the words of, there's nothing to eat here. (laughs) Um, I was like, okay, there's a lot to eat here. And look at the the snack list, right? There's, you know, grape tomatoes and string cheese. There's, um, you know, clementines and yogurt. There's uh, berries and peanut butter or whatever. So having that snack list. So if dinner was not filling, that snacks are available and they are healthy snacks and you might not recognize them because they're not, you know, exactly what you may be used to, but let's just say they're there and here's your little list. So anyway, those two things really game changers. I love that. Good, good tips, good advice. And don't forget the, uh, the chickpea flatbreads because that's certainly got to be, <laughs> got to be on exactly. that list. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now I'm obsessed. So what's next for you? You know, you're, you're, in the game, you're in the ring, as you shared earlier, you've written books, you're on Instagram, you're doing all this cool stuff. Anything like that we need to know about that's happening, that's new and uh, exciting? Interesting that you say this. So I have done a lot of work with a business coach who's really a life coach, but she doesn't like to be called a life coach. Um, And one of the things we work on is something that triggers me is what's next. All of a sudden, when I hear like, oh my God, what's next? What's next? I get triggered and I feel like I'm in a rat race and I feel low energy and I feel like competitive and I feel just bad. And so I have a new philosophy and I've used this for years now, but it's all, this is all I do is I wake up and show up. I do the work in front of me with joyful enthusiasm. And I stay open to the possibilities around me. And when I do those three things, right? Like show up, do the work in front of me with joyful enthusiasm. And then I stay open to the possibilities. Magical things happen beyond any goal that I could possibly set for myself. This is living in flow for me. This is high vibe. It is opportunities come and, you know, and I get to give my best work to everything that I'm doing instead of just like always like just so worried about what's next. 
Um, that has, it has changed me at the core of who I am. And I, so I don't know, I don't know what that is. And that is the most exciting answer that I could give you. That is so cool. And, and you did obviously play a role in my diet is better than yours on ABC. And I'm so happy you won that. And I don't know if people could still watch that. Is it online anywhere? Is it on YouTube? There's clips, there's clips around. Yes. There's clips <laughs> okay. around that I have seen for sure. I mean, yeah. It's like, you know, it's stuff like that. It's like, I never set out to write books, be on a reality show, be the head dietitian for the Cubs for 10 years. Like I'm not set out to do all of this stuff as like a goal setting thing. It's just everything that I do. I show up, I call it the joy hustle is that I follow my joy and I hustle after, right? So it's like, I don't just follow my joy and I don't just hustle. I do both. And you know, your quality of work is very high when you have a lot of enthusiasm and you're putting it all, putting all your effort in, leaving it all on the dance floor. Yeah, no, that's good. And it is, you know, when you freelance, which is what I do, I never know really from day to day. And just when I think I, I'm looking this way because my husband's office is over there, he's out now, but if he was here, he'd be tiptoeing through the kitchen, making toast. And I'm like, I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> you got to make your toast like right now. He's obsessed with toast. <laughs> so so um, I will say to him like, oh my gosh, I've never been so busy. I don't know how I'm going to do it. And then three days later, my career is over. I got nothing. I got nothing on the counter. And then three days later, I walk out of the office. He's like, don't say it. I'm like, I have too much work. I can't do it. It's like, it just changes right every day. It is, it is the ebb and flow and getting, you know, that's why I say you got to just like be able to work in that flow as opposed to like strong holding and trying to choke out goals. It's like, you know, if you can live in that flow and just know that's the natural way of things, it feels so much better. I like this. I'm done setting goals. It's over. <laughs> it's over. <Yeah. laughs> I hate, yes. I mean, that's very controversial, right? People think that is very controversial, but I love it. It's, it is, it's uh, living inspired, mm -hmm. you know, in Go spirit. With Go with the flow. So where can people remind people where they can find you on the web, on your website and on social media? Yeah. So DJ Blattner is everything, right? DJ Blattner.com is my website. DJ Blattner is my social. That's easy. Yes. We're done. We're done. I cannot thank you enough for coming on the podcast. I have learned so much and I hope my listeners have learned so much and we're totally jumping on the, the chickpea flower bandwagon. It's happening. I love it. And if I could also give you another call to action, pick up a jump rope. <laughs> I don't know about she that. Says no. she <laughs> That's says not no. part hey. of my flow. Not part of the oh flow. Oh my gosh. Not thank gonna you happen. so much for having me. Well, thank you, Joy. Joy. I'm calling you Joy. <laughs> I don't mind it. I don't mind it. It was a nice oh. faux pas slip. I liked it. I do have a joy in my life and that is my mother-in-law. She's great. <laughs> DJ Blattner. Thank you so, so much. I'm so glad you came on the show. This was great. Thanks for having me. Mwah. Farewell, farewell. And to all of my listeners, if you enjoyed today's show, post a review on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, wherever you get your podcasts. I say this every time. Go to LissisHealthyTable.com, episode 97. We're gonna, I'm gonna share that chickpea recipe with you guys. So head on over. I'll give you all links to GJ, DJ. And as always, thanks for listening to Liz's Healthy Table.